Good morning, St. John's. Welcome to our Youth Sunday. Let us open up with a word of prayer. God, thank you for letting us have woken up this morning. Thank you for giving us another day that we're all alive and well. I ask that you touch the souls that have been affected by COVID-19, not just those who have been infected by it, but those who know people who have been infected by it and are currently experiencing the repercussions of those that have passed away from it. Thank you for just letting everything be all right right now. Thank you that society is still able to keep running during this pandemic. And please bless the societies that have seriously been hurt by it. Thank you for just letting me wake up today and not be worried about much of anything. Thank you for distance learning and how we've still been able to learn and continue our school so that we don't have to repeat anything. Thank you for technology and that has gotten to the point where we can do a live stream service and not have to risk getting COVID-19 to go to church um, or do anything. Thank you that society is still running right now. Um, I also ask that you touch all the lives that have been affected by police brutality, not just in the last month or two, but since since the beginning of the United States. Um, thank you that technology has gotten us to a place where we can see a lot of it now, but not all of it, Lord. I bless all of those people whose stories have not been told. I ask you to help everyone that has to deal with someone profiling them on a daily basis um, and take the hate out of those who do profile. And even if it's not consciously, let them know that that's what they're doing. Um, and take that spirit out of them. Um, I ask that everyone watching this stream right now will continue with their day and have a great Sunday. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Today we'll be reading from the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which, ha which was given thee by prophecy, which the laying on the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself, and them that hear thee. May the Lord bless the hearing and doing of the Holy Word.
Good morning. Today's announcements. Weekly prayer call. Please join us at 7 a.m. on Sunday and Wednesday mornings for our St. John's Family Prayer Call led by Pastor Wallace. The dial-in number is 425-436-6308. Access code 312-522. St. John's is on the radio. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on Tap On Radio 1070 on the AM dial. You can download the Tap On Radio app, click on radio, and click on the broadcast. Join us on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. for Zoom Bible study. An email notification is sent out on Tuesdays. However, if you do not currently receive notifications from the church, please call or email us your email address so we can add you to the weekly invite. If you are in need, know that the church is here for you. Please call the church and leave a detailed message and a deacon will be in touch with you. We are extremely thankful for your continued financial support to St. John's. Whether your giving is online by simple give, mail to the church or during a drive-by, we thank God for your continued stewardship and pray his many blessings upon you. If you find that our services have been a blessing to you and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and click on the notification button so you receive an alert when new services are posted. Additionally, if you're looking for a church home, do consider St. John's. Call the church office and leave a message and we will get in touch with you. As we pray for the sick and the elderly, let us also pray for one another in this difficult time. Here at the Dome, the building may be closed, but the church is still open. We wish you and your family good health, stay safe, and be strong, as we will get through this better together. Have a blessed day. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to the Church at the Dome. We're extremely grateful that you chose to worship with us. Today, here at St. John's Baptist Church, we are celebrating our youth as it is National Children's Day. Many have said that young people are the church of the future, but I contend that young people are really the church of today. In fact, the reason why many of our churches have been able to navigate through this time of pandemic is because of the ingenuity and technological savvy of our young people. So today, we honor you. We're grateful for you and thank God for your faithfulness to the ministry and commitment to building the kingdom of God. I want to encourage our young people, like Paul encouraged his son in the ministry, Timothy, to let no man despise your youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Today, we've asked a couple of the young people of St. John's to share with us about their experience of being young believers in this 21st century. I hope that you will be blessed by their words, and I pray that God will continue to stir up every gift that is inside of them. After we have been blessed by our virtual choir, receive the testimony of our Joshua generation.
I've been asked to share my experiences of having a relationship with God and my day-to-day -day interactions as a young person. I'm in seventh grade and attend an all-girls school. Most of my friends have various belief systems such as Hinduism, Sikhism, Judaism, Catholicism, Islam, and atheism. We may believe different things, but we have similar values such as kindness, respecting our parents and elders, education, and each other. We even attend each other's religious ceremonies, for example, bat mitzvahs and Eid celebrations. A few of my friends have even visited the church. We treat each other with kindness and are supportive of each other. I'm fortunate because I have, I've only had positive experiences. Hello, my name is Kendall Love, and I enjoy going to church. Sometimes me and my brother talk about what God wants us to do. We have to obey our parents and others. Being a Christian is difficult sometimes, but I try to be kind, nice to everyone, even when they're not nice to me. I wish people would love God how much I do, period. Hello, my name is Shamir Miles. I'm 17 years old, and I'm currently a high school student. And I feel like growing up as a Christian youth in the 21st century has helped me a lot because I've developed a better moral compass. Um, I have a stronger sense of right and wrong and I feel like I see my peers do things that probably shouldn't be doing. And I feel like knowing the church from such a young age until now has helped me better discern what I should and should not associate with those people. Um, it also gives me a sense of community an extended family in that I can go to the church and the church members for whatever I need and they're like my brothers, my sisters, my they're like extra parents. It's it's very close in the community and I feel that I can kind of take refuge there because in any other place I would have to worry about all the other worldly issues going on but when I go to the church all I have to worry about is praising God and I just feel very welcome there, I feel very safe. Hi, my name is Ava McCune, and today I'm going to be answering the question, what is it like to be a Christian child during this time? To help better interpret this, I'm going to start with a psalm. Psalm 23, verses 4 through 5 states, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil. My cup overflows. Now, this psalm speaks to me. Because as a child during this time, I think it's all about faith. We're going through very tough times with the global pandemic that's on the loose and with the catastrophe of a White House. If you know what I mean. Now, me being a child, I don't have a job. And I don't really have to worry about food as much as adults do. So this time can be pretty bearable. But also, as a child, I cannot vote. So I can't help to elect a president that I know that we're going to need right now. Just because I can't vote and because I can't march in protest, that does not mean that I can't do anything. All I have to do is keep my faith in God. And that's where being Christian comes in. Keeping my trust that God will make everything all right is key. Because being a child does not last forever. I'll soon be old enough to vote. But until then, my trust is in God. Surely, if God can get us in this pandemic, then we can get out of it and safely. And when we do, we'll encourage others to do the same as well. Truth is, we do feel hopeless sometimes because we're humans. And we may feel that everything might not be all right. But then... Then we realize that God's got a plan, a plan for every single one of us. And no matter what everyone else is doing, whether it may be good or bad, we have to do the right thing. Now, no matter what, don't let your faith waver for even a second. Because your faith is the only thing that gets you closer to Jesus, what gets you to God. So ultimately, what I, ultimately, what I think I'm saying right now is... Do not fear, even in the valley of the shadow of death, which in this case is the pandemic. Because God's got his rod and his staff, and he's protecting you from all evil. 
Psalm 23 ends with, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me through all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This psalm proves and reveals that if you do the right thing and simply listen to what God tells you to do, then you'll be all right. Because it's not your fear that saves you and gets you into heaven. It's the strength and love and will of God. Good morning, church. My name is Asia Wise, and today I will be talking to you about my experiences being a Christian teenager in the 21st century. Being a teenager is difficult, and in modern times, we deal with all sorts of troubles, such as cyberbullying, peer pressure, violence in our schools, and mental health issues. It's challenging to keep your integrity when the problems of the world are weighing on you. That's why this scripture is so meaningful to me at this time. Isaiah 54, 17 reads, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is from me, says the Lord. As teens and young adults in the 21st century, I can't help but to feel like our whole lives have been a test of faith especially as kids who were born in 2001. 9-11 occurred only months after we were born, which caused a major shift in behavior towards Muslim and Middle Eastern people. The hatred towards them was so strong that it ignited a new round of racism towards other minority groups, and, up, and as well as starting the war on terror. Soon after that, we had to deal with natural disasters such as Hurricane Katrina, which left many families homeless. Our generation has been plagued with mass shootings that have occurred in one of our most trusted and sacred zones, schools. Recent events such as the spread of COVID-19 and the tragic death of George Floyd has sprung so many tests upon my faith more than any other event in my entire life. The death of George Floyd impacted me in ways that are hard to explain in words, but the feelings of hatred and anger and sadness that I was feeling towards the world. I was so lucky and so blessed to be able to find comfort in God and having a strong relationship with him that I was able to build through um, listening to worship music and going to church and reading scriptures in the Bible just really had a really strong impact on my life. And although we may not realize it, we've had to grow up at such a young age because all we know is a world of hate and turmoil. But through all of that, our trust in God has not faded. Because of this, I often think of the scripture, 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and, a sound, and of a sound mind. This is why my faith is important to me. To me, being a Christian in the 21st century is not only about staying true to the word of God in times where our faith is tested, but utilizing our faith to continue the fight against injustices across the world, especially injustices that don't directly affect us. Because at the end of the day, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. To conclude, preparing for this presentation, I had the opportunity to reflect upon my faith and knowing that the foundation is based on John 1, 1, which reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Although we are connected through Christ, the younger and older generations have grown up in vastly different fashions. Our society has grown a great deal on a technological and innovative standpoint. We have to balance the ways of new intelligence that is heavily fact-based with our faith. Romans 10, 17 reminds us, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's why daily devotion is critical for our generation. My name is Zuri McCune, and I am a young, black, Christian woman. I would like to speak from Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 16 to 22. He has broken my teeth with gravel and covered me with ashes. You have moved my soul far from peace. I have forgotten prosperity, and I said, My strength 
and my hope have perished in the Lord. Remember my affliction and roaming the worm wood and the gal, my soul still remembers and sinks within me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. Being young in this country is a hard thing to be, especially as a young Christian who is finding their connection to God. Through this whole year, we have seen death after death due to the coronavirus. We have seen a government ignore an issue that has rotted its soul since the beginning. We are finally seeing the world shift due to the eight minute, 46 second video of the public lynching of George Floyd. As a young person in the 21st century, it is hard to hide behind the excuse of not knowing the things that are going on in the world. Many of us have access to social media, TV and other outlets where the current issues of the world are the hot topic. If you go through Instagram today, you can see millions of posts of people's dissatisfaction with the way the government and modern day society deal with police brutality and systematic racism. Additionally, we have seen a generation, my generation, stand up to these corrupt people. We have seen young person after young person show up and show out at protests, looking hatred straight in the eyes and being unmoved. In the past few years, we have seen how loud my generation has gotten all over the world about issues we will have to deal with in the next few years. Things like climate change, which is real, things like women's rights, as well as police brutality. And although we will have adversities and we will inevitably have hard times, I have not been consumed by dark forces and I will always remember his compassion never fails. Hello, my name is Sean Wallace Jr. and I am the son of Pastor Sean Wallace at the St. John's Baptist Church. And today I'll be giving my two cents in what I believe it means to be a young Christian in the 21st century. In a country that is continuously plagued with police brutality, disease, and a lack of leadership from the powers that be, it is almost inevitable for someone to feel hopeless, scared, and faith fatigued. Even though all Americans have felt the cold realities that infest our social media and news outlets, there seems to be a group of people in our society that has seemed to have felt it the worst. Young people in our country who once optimistically looked up to technology and all of its capabilities are now trapped in a never-ending loop of videos of police killings, violence against protesters, and trolls who call their stand against injustice a complete violation of law and order in this country. The same law and order that has created a broken student loan system, leaving millions of them in debt, the same law and order system that has failed them in giving them proper testing for COVID-19. And the same law and order system that has created officers that people of color fear because one wrong move dealing with them can be a young person's last move. In a world that seems to bear no hope, there was one question left to ask. What does it mean to be a young Christian in the 21st century? I'm not gonna lie, trying to answer this question on the basis of my own understanding was very hard. And so because of this, I had to get a little help from a man named Paul. Just like young people today, Paul in the book of Ephesians seemed to be in a hopeless situation. Locked up by Roman law and order system, Paul decides to write a letter. Now, everyone should take the chance to analyze the whole letter but Paul gives the answer to my question in Ephesians 3.20, which states, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh 
in us. Amen. Even in bondage, Paul has the courage to share with us how powerful our God is. Him in the text, which refers to God, can do more than what we ask or think, which is a relief to me because when young people have the courage to think of a way out of a situation, even in a hopeless situation, God is saying that he can do more than that. So what does it mean to be Christian in the 21st century? I believe it means thinking of solutions, even in a hopeless situation. I think it means believing that God can do more than what you ask or think. And most of all, I believe that it means accepting the call that God has put on your life. So just like Paul, you can have God's infinite power working within you. Thank you. Have a great day. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We hope that you've enjoyed hearing from our Joshua generation. I pray that what they have shared resonates in each and every one of us and that we continue to train up our children in the way that they should go. So as they grow old, they will not depart from it. Congratulations to all of our children who have endured and completed this time of homeschooling. We will be recognizing all of our graduates at our next drive-by on Saturday, July the 4th. Let us pray. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, henceforth and forevermore, let every heart say, Amen. Welcome to the St. John's Baptist Church online giving in one minute demo. If you already have a Simple Give account, be sure to log in with your account information to store your giving in your account history. Let's get started and head over to our church website at www.stjohnscotchplains.org. Once you are on the landing page, you will select the giving tab from the information bar. From here, you will be taken to our Simple Give page. Once on Simple Give, you will select the fund to which you wish to give, such as tithes, benevolence, or other. Next, you will enter the gift amount you wish to give. Lastly, please enter your information and press the Submit tab. Once submitted, you will receive immediate confirmation of your gift. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Sean T. Wallace Sr., and the St. John's family, we thank you for your gift and pray God's blessings for you and your family.